So off you go. And uh, now we can play. So that's where it gets complicated and it's so complicated for the first time I'll have to use some chart to help me explain. There is a bewildering array of uh, formats uh, of disk drive which makes this complicated uh, because not only it's complicated to understand but the computer can't figure out by itself. Uh, so here's a list of some format, that's not all of them, of the five and a quarter inch, those are uh, just what the disk capabilities are, and the, um, ah, this should say 3.5, not three and a quarter, it's three and a half, you know, modern diskettes. Uh, so it all started with the single density type, uh, which is a disk that has one head just on the bottom of the disk. Um, and this one has 40 tracks, but you also see them referred as 48 track per inch. Um, it rotates at 300 RPM. The data rate that comes out of it is 250 kilohertz, and it has a capacity of 180K. This is a really old drive that you find into the TRS 80s and uh, the Apple IIs actually. Uh, quite rare. I just saw one uh, two weeks ago and didn't buy it um, because you do much better with the same disk drive that's called double density DD. Uh, it's the same thing but it has two heads, one on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, same number of tracks, 40, same RPM. Uh, and of course, since it has two sides, it switches between head one, head two, head one, head two all the time. And you can get, uh, depending on the formatting, so it's approximately 360K. Uh, and uh, that's for PC formatting and uh, you will see pretty soon that my HP disk is different it doesn't do that um, same amount of data then you have a weird one which will the quad density which is fairly rare uh, same number of heads but it has 80 track per uh, 80 tracks on it it's a, no, uh, 96 track per inch uh, same rotation speed same data transfer rate so that boots that uh, puts it up at 720k and those are mainly uh, pre-PC devices and uh, Commodore is one of them. Uh, it's fairly rare. Then you have the uh, second uh, popular one which is the HD. Also two heads, 80 tracks like the Commodore drive but it rotates at 360 RPM and uh, the rate is 500 kilohertz and so that's the common 1.2 uh, megabyte uh, PC format however for backwards compatibility it can also go down in rate and it's 300k so what happens is that 360 rpm and 300k rate is actually the same bit density as 300 rpm and 250k rate uh, so it will be able to read and sometimes with many restrictions write uh, but that's usually not something you should do uh, but it should be able to read a double density disk and for once uh, it's smart enough to do it on its own so what does that tell you is that you have to uh, oh I forgot in addition to that you have two modulation formats FN and MFN FM is really old as the 8 inch so uh, my, my computer can't even do FM so it's MFM and you have an arbitrary choice of sectors and track byte per sector, sector ordering, an arbitrary choice of file system, uh, which means that it's a complete mess uh, that you have to understand if you want to operate them properly. So um, just uh, to summarize here, it's already complicated enough. The disks I have, which are the popular ones and the ones you really care about uh, for PCs, is the double density and the HD, right? And those are the two I have over here, the double density and the HD ones, uh, multi-room. And uh, of course, they don't take the same media, right? This is a double density media and this is the HD media and they are, in HD you can write in double density over it but uh, not uh, vice versa. 
Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about this drive, let's try to play with them with some DOS tools. Uh, uh, let's go to my C drive, my DOS installation. And uh, I have uh, some interesting tools here. Um, let's try. So the two that we are going to explore first are OmniDisk and uh, Image Disk, uh, that allow you to to work at uh, sector level. OmniDisk. No. See OmniDisk. So OmniDisk is actually the more granular one and but also harder to use omni disk uh, but it has uh, full control of the drive so here you go uh, it tells me I'm on disk 0 cylinder 0 head 0 and sector 0 I'll explain all of those in a second uh, but for now let's have some fun with the basic commands you can do so I'm on this double density drive no I'm not uh, so the first thing I need to tell it is to drive one okay so now down there it says D1 so D0 which is my B drive over here and you can do such fun things as motor on and here we go the light came on it's spinning uh, so you can you know, toggle that sim single uh, motor line, turn it off. But then I can do seeks. So I can go and do seek 20. Huh, it did it, right? It, and so since the, this is a 40 track, it went about in the middle. I'm going to do seek 40 went to the end, seek zero, right, and so I can access basically any, any track, but uh, you, you can see, just move one track up, seek one, seek two, these are basically the spacing between the tracks, uh, so I can position the head whichever way I want, and I also can choose head one, and it's going to read from head one or head zero is going to read back from head zero uh, but before I need to go uh, before I go any further I need to explain more stuff on uh, cylinder heads and sectors so back to a lecture so sorry guys more lecturing so we can understand uh, formatting and tracks and sectors uh, so which is necessary to use the software so here's uh, how a disc is. It has all its tracks, uh, 40 or 80. Uh, and uh, there's a little hole in the middle. I think it's right here, right? You can see where the hole goes. Uh, and every time the hole goes in front, it's going to be a signal for the beginning of the track. Uh, by the way, uh, that also means that you can put the disc this way and it's going to read this but if you put it that way it won't work because it's not able to read the uh, the, 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 uh, the hole and uh, the detector is over here you, you, I'll show you on the drive later on so uh, why this is, is this important is that because the disk is divided in tracks zero over here and then it goes in and the last track is either 40 or 80 normally not always um, and then it's subdivided into sectors and sectors is the smallest amount of stuff you can read it will read a sector at a time um, and then this is not defined by hardware this is defined by software which means you can choose basically whatever you want and sure enough uh, different computers choose different settings so here I started, I made an, a hypothetical one that actually doesn't exist, one that has eight sectors and start at sector zero. Uh, and then you can put several numbers of bytes in your sector. Um, PC mostly is 512 bytes, but you'll see we are, you'll see another disk which has 250, my HP does that. 
And then you can number the sectors any way you want. Uh, it can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Uh, but it doesn't have to start with 0. Some formats start with 1. And then they don't even have to be ordered. Uh, and uh, so this, which is what's called the interleave. So here is interleave 1. They are ordered 0, 1, 2, 3. But you can format a disk with a different interleave where it goes 0, something else. 1, skip, 2, skip, and that's called an interleave of 2. What does that do? It's used in, uh, for older computers. It allows the computer to read the first sector, have a little bit of time to do processing, and get to the next sector. And if your computer is really slow, then you'll use a really wide interleave. You'll skip 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in my HP 7 sectors. Uh, which is an interleave of five. If your computer is fast, it's modern, then you use a, a one interleave. Uh, so, how, and this is called formatted, right? Uh, how much tracks you have. So, what are the popular ones? Well, the PC double density 360K uses use actually 40 tracks. It has nine sectors, uh, and I believe they're numbered one to nine. Um, two heads uh, and uh, 512 byte per sector. Uh, the HD format has uh, 80 tracks, 15 sectors. Your sectors are different uh, because it can pack more bits uh, per uh, RPM because it has a 500k rate. Uh, so it's still 512 bytes per sector. But it used the you no know, double speed to write on at double rate. And then you have my HP will work later on, which is double density, but uses only 35 out of the 40 tracks. And this I can't figure out why. Probably to have spare tracks somewhere. It doesn't use the same number of sectors as a PC. It's 16 sectors, and it doesn't use the same number of bytes per sector. It's only 256 bytes. So it has double the sector but half the bits per sector. So first thing I'll do here, uh, since I have a double density drive, is put cylinder 40. Uh, then I'm going to turn the map on so we can see what it reads. Um, and uh, we are going to do a scan. And what it's going to try to do is go through the whole disk and read the sectors one after another and it will read the sector number, they have a tag on it. So it found the rate by itself, by the way, it's auto rate, we could have told the rate too. And here they appear to be in order, sector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so this was written with an interleave of one, uh, which you expect it. Uh, and it does it for head one and head two. So you see cylinder 21, number of the track. It switches between head one and head two, reads at the rate, and reads all the sectors. There are nine sectors, so it's a PC formatted disk. Number one to nine, so I was right. So we wait, uh, and eventually it's going to reach the end of the drive. It's probably almost at the end. So it has 34, 35, and it's going to read until 40. All right. So it was able to figure out what the format is, uh, which I knew already, right? But uh, if you had an unknown disk, so 0 to 40, I had to tell, didn't know. Uh, it's a 40 track single step uh, drive. Sectors are number 1 to 9, so that's sectors here, right, I, they are not, not number zero, they start at one, and there's nine of them around. Uh, inter oh no, it's interleaved, one to two, so they are not in order. It means it goes zero, skip, one, skip, two, skip, etc. Uh, so it's, uh, the sectors is 512 byte per sector, and tells you how much bytes you put you can put on that and it recognize format and it actually gets it wrong. It thinks it's an IBM 720K 
uh, but it's actually an IBM 360 because it has only 40 tracks. So uh, then let's um, let's read the sector. Let's go seek zero. Let's read the boot sector. Uh, head zero. Right. So I'm uh, sector zero. So I am D1, C0, head 0, head 0, and I read sector. Invalid set, oh sorry. Uh, cancel. Sorry, sectors here start at 1. They give me an error, so I'm an idiot. Sector 1 is a PC disk. Read sector. Alright and uh, so it was able to read it and of course sector zero is usually an interesting one because it's the boot sector and uh, here it is and you can see um, it's, it's for a system disk and there's some boot code over here this is not so it will jump to if you try to execute this one non-system disk or disk error replace and strike any key when ready and of course that's what you get uh, when you try to boot up a, uh, from the disk drive and it's not a, a booting drive. So let's up the ante here. So perfectly regular disk, double density, looks fine. Let's quit this and let's try to go and do a dear the read it from under DOS. And it's trying it, it's trying it, it's trying it. Sector not found, reading drive B, abort, retry, fail. Can't read the disk. But is it a really a bad disk? Okay, abort. Don't you like this, abort, retry, fail. Okay, so let's go back to OmniDisk and find out what's actually on this disk. Drive one. And then we'll do cylinders 40. And then we'll do map on. And we'll do scan. And see if you can read anything. And it can. And all of a sudden, you figure out that something is happening here. It's way more sectors. They start at zero and go to 15. So this is not a PC disk. So it's going through all of them. Read, 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 read. And here something interesting happens. It went from 15 sectors back to 9 sectors. And so that's why it tells me, well, this extends from 0 to 39. I told it that. And it has problem with the sectors because it's variable range. Uh, and the interleague is 1.2. Sector size is variable, which means it doesn't know what it is. And, uh, but I do, I do know what it is. Uh, the 16 sector tracks is the HP format. And it uses only the former, uh, the, the first 35 tracks. So what happens, I formatted, this disk was formatted in the HP machine, but the drive was pre-formatted. I bet you it was, it's a soft sectored. It had the remnants of the five last tracks that are the IBM ones. Okay, now that we have a disk and we uh, know basically its format, uh, let's try to see if we can re recover which, what is in it. Uh, and for that, I'm going to use another program I wanted to show you, which is called Image Disk. It goes by IMD. And this one is a lot easier to use um, once you know what to do. First, you're reading, first you need to um, go to Settings, press S and tell it as much as you can to, uh, about the drive, drive B of course, that's fine. 
cylinders, so we know it's an HP lift by now, so it's 35, size 2, double step non, and all the rest, it should be able to figure it out by itself. Then we're going to attempt a read of what's in there in test.imd uh, it likes the imd extension for some reason uh, and I already tried it so it already entered a commit uh, so we'll skip that and now we'll read uh, and press enter and uh, something bad will happen because uh, it reads the first one okay finds the sectors and then it struggles, struggles, struggles and aborts and the reason is uh, that it has read the bottom sur uh, the top surface and it has trouble with the bottom surface so, or vice versa uh, so this is a tough disk which uh, allows me to demonstrate another feature of this you go to X exclusion map and it's sector 0 Top. That's causing us problems. So I press spacebar until I get the top excluded, and I might have to exclude more than this. It's a pretty bad this at the beginning, and see if that's enough to attempt to read again. Yes, yes, read. doing it and you can tell when it gets the sectors it puts them all here then it puts an X over here it didn't even try which is good not it had enough that it went to the next sector it's still struggling on the top surface it got the bottom we got one error two errors on the top I think that this gets better afterwards if it yeah so now it's doing it Right, and it found the rate all by itself. Uh, it found that it had 16 uh, sectors, 256 bytes by itself. Uh, so it's pretty self driven, this one. So right now it's uh, reading all what it can read on an image. Uh, and the image is more than a binary, it has plenty of information, it retains the sectoring info and it also retains which are good sectors and which are bad sectors right done right, so let's look at the image you have to use imdv and the view and there we go so it was able to read this i knew it's the communications package and the first sectors is uh, the directory, so we can see all the files that were in this diskette, all the names of the files. And then eventually we are going to go into the file section itself. So it, it just skipped, it, it didn't even show me the, the stuff you can read. And here we go, we have our HP 87, 86, 87 channel emulation, revision C, blah blah blah. So it uh, could probably retrieve all the file except the very beginning which might be it anyhow a directory and doesn't matter and uh, so very powerful tool uh, you know if you get, I tried that under DOS DRB couldn't even tell me anything right it's gonna tell me it doesn't even exist <laughs> right um, all right